Good evening. Good evening and welcome once again as we continue our Lenten season. This is now the second Wednesday in the season of Lent. And it's uh, great to have you all here on what's uh, been an absolutely gorgeous day. And it sounds like uh, we're getting more of those. And so hopefully uh, that, will, uh, that will help liven up this season and hopefully make spring come a little sooner. And let's hope that uh, for the few that, that were able to come on Sunday, you heard from one of our youth up here that, that couldn't wait for that April blizzard. And so we'll, we'll see what happens on that. Um, no real announcements. Um, worship this, uh, this Sunday with Holy Communion at, uh, at 9 a.m. again, Sunday school at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday, and thanks for being here tonight. Um, we continue with, uh, with some opening music. Worship continues with a reading of the psalm. Psalm 5, 1 through 8. Give here to my words, O Lord. Give heed to to my say, saying, a sign. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and want. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness, evil not soldier with you, the boastful with will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors, abhors the bloodthirsty and delightful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, you will enter your house. I will blow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of my enemies. Make your way straight before you, before me. Thank you. Continue with uh, our opening dialogue. Look with mercy, gracious God, upon people everywhere who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Rouse from us, from our complacency, and help us to eliminate cruelty wherever it is found. Strengthen those who seek equality for all. Grant that everyone may enjoy a fair portion of the abundance of the, of the earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you are able, please rise for a reading of the Holy Gospel. (laughs) 
The Holy Gospel for this night, the second Wednesday in the season of Lent, comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Mark, once again the 14th chapter, verses 26 through 31. I'll begin. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become like deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to the Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all became deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this beautiful evening that you grant us, we rejoice in the beautiful starry nights. We rejoice in the warmth of the temperatures, in the warmth of the wind. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you give to us tonight to be here in your house. We thank you for all the gifts that you bestow upon us. That greatest gift being the gift of your only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends of Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A little light reading I was doing earlier today. I have a lot of the classics in my office, and this is one of them. It's called The Gospel According to Peanuts. I want to share just a tiny bit from this. It's a comic strip piece, so I'm going to have to talk about it to you so you understand. In, uh, in the first slide, Charlie Brown is coming out of his house. He's dressed with a football helmet on and is carrying a football. Lucy is standing behind him. And Lucy says, why don't you let me hold the ball for you, Charlie Brown? The second slide has Charlie Brown right up in Lucy's face. And he says, do you think I'm crazy? Do you think you can fool me again with the same trick every year? Lucy. Oh, I won't pull the ball away, Charlie Brown. I promise you, I give you my bonded word. In the next slide, Lucy is down with the football and she's getting it set up with her finger on the top. Charlie Brown is walking away and he says, all right, I'll trust you. I have an undying faith in human nature. In the next slide, Charlie Brown is racing at full speed. I believe as he's running, he says that people want to change and can do so, and I believe that they should be given a chance to prove themselves. The next slide shows a Lucy smiling with the football having been pulled away and the simple words, ah! And then, whoop! As Charlie Brown is lying, face up, Lucy standing over him. Charlie Brown, your faith in human nature is an inspiration to us all. You'll see where that comes to play 
in a minute. We are now well into the evening in Mark 14. Jesus has, by this time, already instituted the Lord's Supper. He has shared with them a loaf of bread, having blessed it, broke it, saying to them, Take, this is my body. And then taking a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Now to set the scene, you need to know how they were seated. Normally, when the Passover was celebrated, and people ate the Passover meal, they ate the Passover meal standing up. Because it was to show that they may have to leave with haste in a moment's notice. Jesus and the disciples now are inclined. They're kind of half propped up on pillows. There is a kind of a table, but probably no more than that high. They have just sang a hymn They went out to the Mount of Olives. I think of all the places that I have been in my times in the Holy Land. That's probably one of the, the most awe-inspiring ones. Because you knew somewhere, if not in that particular place, very close by. Not so long ago, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was with his disciples. And scripture says, Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I remember those words because it was part and parcel to the sermon that the bishop preached on my ordination. He talked about that, that I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And he shared with, with me a, a new pastor and with all the pastors around, that that's something that happens more than we think. But he continued, after I am raised up, I will go before you to the Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. I will never pull that ball out from under you. You can trust my word. I think of all the events that took place on that fateful night before Good Friday that must have hurt our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the very bottom of his soul. It was the fact that his closest friends ran from him. Think about that. God had prepared Jesus for many things. He had prepared him for all of the hurt and for all of the pain that was going to come. He had prepared him for the fact that he was going to be betrayed. He prepared him for the fact that he was going to have to go to a mock trial, that he was going to be whipped to within an inch of his life and that he would suffer a horrible death on the cross. Jesus was ready for those things, but I think the one thing that he was not ready for was that his friends would desert him. A 
Again, he had been with these disciples, this small band, for three years. Think of how many nights they spent together out amongst the stars in the campfires. All of the things that these disciples had seen. All of the miracles. All of the things that had crowds gathering larger and larger each and every day that he would come around. Jesus said, you'll scatter. Peter said to him, are you kidding, Lord? Even though everybody else deserts you, I will never desert you. And then those amazing words from Jesus. Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you, Peter, you who are my right-hand men, are going to deny three times that you ever know me. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. We know the sadness. We know the sorrow that took place in those hours that are described not only in Mark 14, but later on when we get into that day that Christianity calls Good Friday. I would guess of all the things that happened to him, every one of the strokes of the whip, every kick that a smiling guard gave to him, the blood from the crown of thorns, everything else, I think the thing that hurt him the most is that his only good friends, his best friends, him. We're going to find that this begins in next week's gospel. When we hear of an incident that we decided to call the Gethsemane incident and about what took place right after these words. I'll never pull that football away from you, Charlie Brown. I never will. Trust me. I'll never desert you, Jesus, said Peter. Even though everybody else will, not me. And all the other disciples said the same thing. Either will I. I won't either. Either will I. They forgot that there was somebody else at work in play at this time, too, called the tempter. We'll talk more about that as well. Join us next week, will you? congregation would please rise. Our words continue as we express our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. If there's a hymnal around, um, grab it. You'll find it, the Nicene Creed on page 104. On page 104.
Please join with me. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with prayers. Ayla. Dear God, in our lives we may come across a time where we have to choose to deny you or not, do the right thing or disobey you. Most may say they will never deny you or disobey you, but in the end we may do the wrong thing. I pray that you will guide us and give us the strength and faith in you to do the right thing and not disobey you. Amen. Thank you. And Jake. May you please rise and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. How about some special music? As I shared with you, 
our, uh, our location. That's Wednesday night is in the Garden of Gethsemane. In that garden, there are two trees that many botanists have said are at least 2,000 years old. Two olive trees. And most believe that if they were not actually there that night that Jesus was betrayed and he was handed over to the guards, that certainly they were the offspring or the first shoots from those trees that were there. And it's interesting because all the locals have a name for them. They call them the witnesses. Please join us next week. We'll see the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.